these are some UI messages put on by a client script. And these are some UI messages put on by a server side script. What are they and how do you do them? Stick around and let's find out. Hello and welcome back. So we're gonna look at all things UI messages and service. Now, I'm gonna do some little boring presentation bits and then we'll dive into the tool and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But before you do that, make sure you're subscribed. And if you are subscribed already, big thumbs up, but also share it with all your ServiceNow buddies. It does make a massive difference. So what do we mean by UI messages? Well, we mean those little form annotations that perhaps give you information that says, hey, you've got to do this next, or here's some useful info, or some error messages that perhaps on form that says, hey, you've done something wrong. But I'm also going to include things like alerts or confirmation pop-ups, those little pop-up things that you have to click to get rid of. So let's look at server-side messages first. So we've got add info message. Um, you would pass in a parameter of what you want the message to be. If you want to do that from the messages table, I've done another, another video on that. I'll put an annoying link at the top. You've also got add error message. Now, the one thing I would advise, it's key to have some kind of standard across your platform in terms of what is information and what is an error, because I've seen people use um, those in different ways across the same process, right? Error would be, hey, you've done something wrong. Info is, hey, we just want to give you some information. It sounds obvious, but just make sure you've got that understanding. But I also want to draw some attention to some log messages that aren't for users. They're more for administrators or developers. And you can use things like gs.print or gs.log, error, the, the warn, there's, there's lots of different ones. But the key thing in that is make sure you've got them switched off in production because they can hamper a bit of um, performance. And next we have client messaging from usually client scripts, right? And again, we'll see some of these in action. I'll, I'll show you a, a script in terms of how you invoke them. But again, they're split into form messages and field messages. And on this, it's kind of similar to the server side. You've got G form. So we're, we're using that object to call it. And then we've got add info message, add error message. We've also got alerts and confirms. These aren't form messages at the top, but these are pop-ups that are going to come up. Now, there is a modern snazzy way that you can do this, which is like a, an SP modal, and we'll cover that on a different video. But for now, you've got alerts. Hey, something that come, pops up and you just click to get rid of it and confirms that you, you have to confirm to move on with the process. Okay? And again, we'll pass in parameters such as a message, annoying link, message table. And then we've got field messages. The field messages on client side, there's a few more of them. So you've got things like show field message that you can pass in a parameter, which allows you to say whether it's an error in info and a warn. And they'll display differently. They'll be in different colors. I think it's um, red, blue, and orange. Okay. And you've got things like hide field messages or hide all field messages. Now that's going to hide the field messages or the messages that or on the field. But it's useful just in case you don't want a recurring message that happens over and over again if a user clicks a button. So I'm going to do a special call out to these two properties, right? And they're not widely known and they're certainly not widely used, but it allows you to adjust the font size to info and error messages. So if you want to draw more attention, if you want a massive like font number 74, don't do that. Um, but you can do that using a system property, but just be careful because that's going to be global across the platform. Okay, so let's stick with the server side messages first. So this is how it'll look on screen. This is what will appear to the end user. We've already seen that. Let's go to the back end and go to business rules. So I've done it on a business rule. Into business rules. Server UI messages, I've called it. And I've done it on the incident table. So if we take a look at the um, script, you can see here, I've got GS add info message and I've got this is an info message and then I've got error message, which is this is an error message. I've also put in things like GS log and info just to show you. Um, but when moving to prod, make sure you're commenting those out or if you put some uh, some property in perhaps um, that allows you to switch it on and off for debugging. Um, but absolutely don't don't get them into prod. It's, it's against best practice. So that's how it's done. It's quite simple. One thing I didn't mention or I haven't mentioned yet if you go to actions here, you can actually add a message here, right? So add message and you can put it there. 
But that's not what this video is about. Go and play with that yourself. This is about scripting. So now let's take a look at some client side goodness. So I've set this up on a client script. So when you change something, in this case, the state, it's going to put messages everywhere, right? So if we change the state again, you could put it on whatever field. We're going to get an alert. So this comes up as a pop up. There are some more sassy looking pop ups um, in terms of a modal. We'll cover that in another video. But this is kind of your standard alert, right? Hey, why not try the Service Ducks podcast? It's out every other Wednesday. Click OK. You've got a confirm. So this is a bit different. So this allows you to say OK or cancel, and you can handle the input slightly differently. So if they cancel, you can just abort or OK. You can confirm and uh, save. So here we get our four messages at the top. And then we start getting our field messages here. So we can say this is an error. We've got a warning, which isn't an orange. I lied before. Why isn't it orange? It should be. Um, and then we've got some info, which is always blue. OK, but what we can also do is I've used hide message and I'll show that in, in a second. Hide messages in the script to then when you change it back and forth. OK, we get the pop ups again but we shouldn't have the duplicated messages under the field. So what, what that means is um, if you've ever played with this, you will have been, it been in the situation where if you make the change to the state or insert field name there and you keep doing it, if you don't put in hide field messages, you're going to have like a recurring message that just um, says perhaps in this case, this is an error constantly, depending on how many times you click it. I'm waffling. Just go and try it and, and see what happens. So let's go and have a look at the script. So here we go, client script. I've done it on chain and state, it's on incident. And here we go, we can see where I put the script here. So the first thing when the new value is not the same as the old value, meaning where I'm changing, changing the state, this is very simple. We're hiding the field message on impact. And I've said true to hold, hide all the field messages. So you can um, inject a parameter which says infos or warns or just hide the errors. Then we've got our alert there. We've got our confirm. Then we've got our info message, our error message, which uh, displayed on the form. And then we've got our field messages there underneath. So I hope you found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It does really help the channel out. And remember, don't forget to drop back here every other Wednesday when myself and co-host James Downs release another episode of the Service Ducks podcast. Until then, I've been Russ. And this is Service Nerd.